Hi, everyone. Hi. Thank you all for being here. We're glad to have this opportunity to share our experience on how to protect the circle engine from running out of memory during the next 30 minutes. First of all, let us introduce ourselves. I'm Huai Yuxu, an infrastructure engineer from PinCap. I'm responsible for the development of TiDB Circle Engine. Meanwhile, I'm the technical lead of TiDB SIG execution and the committer of TiDB SIG planner. I'm Song Gao, an infrastructure engineer at PinCap. I'm responsible for the development of TiDB scheduling. I'm the maintainer of Chaos Mesh and the committer of the TiDB SIG scheduling. Okay, let's take a look at the agenda of this talk. There are four parts covered for this topic. The causes of SQL Engine OOM, the solution to this problem, the implementation in TiDB. TiDB is an open source distributed new SQL database. For those who are not familiar with what TiDB is, we would have a brief introduction before we start the implementation part. And there will be time for questions at the end of this presentation. Song Gao will talk about part one and part two, and I will walk you through part three. So I will hand it over to Song Gao, who will introduce the cause of SQL Engine OOM and the solutions. Now, I'd like to look at when will SQL Engine OOM. We may encounter the SQL Engine OOM in following situations. For example, when the cache of statistics or the table metadata take, uh, takes up too much memory space, we may encounter an OOM risk easily because of the lack of memory space for calculation. When a query executes a hash join and thus builds a large hash table, or when a query executes an in-memory sort on a large data set, the OOM may happen too. When the table scan reads data faster than the consumer operator upon it, the table scan may buffer too much data and thus cause the SQL engine OM. We can categorize those situations into two. One is when the memory space consumption of the memory resident object is too large. The other is when the memory space consumption during calculating is too large. Furthermore, we can divide the second situation into two parts, the pipeline breaker and the pipeline operators. We define pipeline breaker as an operator that, that produces the first output tuple only after all input tuples have been processed. Like hash join, sort, we define pipeline operator as an operator that just passes the data through. It only filters or augments like table scan or index scan. So what can we do to protect the SQL engine from out of memory in those mentioned situations? To limit the memory consumption of the memory resident object, we can use an in-memory cache with a limited size. When the memory threshold is reached, we choose some items to evict according to a specific policy to ensure the memory is limited. To limit the memory space consumption during calculating, we introduce a strategy for the pipeline breakers and the pipeline operators separately. Briefly speaking, we spill the intermediate data into disk for the pipeline breakers and use an adaptive control strategy for the pipeline operators. Next, 
Let's take some examples to show how the different strategies work. The cache with limited size will be introduced here since for most of the case, SQL Engine OOM is caused by the unexpected memory usage during calculating. This graph shows you the sketch of the hash join. The classic hash join algorithm for an inner join of two relations has two phases. First, prepare a hash table using the contents of one relation. This relation is called building side of the join. Once the hash table is built, scan the other relation. This relation is called the prob side. For each row of the prob relation, find the relevant rows from the build relation by locking into the hash table. Usually, the hash table can fit into memory, but if the statistics are missing or updated, the cardinality the cardinality estimates are possibly bad, and therefore the hash table may be overlarged. OM may happen. We need to spill the hash table into the disk for this case. The hash table will be split into multiple partitions, and each partition can fit into available memory. The hash table builder and the progress will process the partitions separately and for now for now as we can see from the right part of the graph if a query requests an order guarantee and there is no index to guarantee the order then the execution must sort the input before proceeding as we can see from the left part of the graph if the input is small, then the sort occurs in memory and it is very cheap. We can split the input into multiple partitions and perform merge sort on them. If the sort is large, an external sort algorithm is used. External sort algorithm generate for into two ways, sorting and merge. In the sorting phase, chunks of data small enough to fit in main memory are read sorted and written out to a temporary file. In the merge phase, the sorted subfiles are combined and the final result will be outputted. Now let's focus on the pipeline operator cases. The SQL engine uses table scan or index scan to fetch data from the storage layer. The fetch process can be abstracted to the producer consumer model. The producer fetches chunks of data from the storage and puts them into a queue. The consumer fetches the data from the queue and consumes it. For a table scan or an index scan, there will be multiple producers, but only one consumer. Obviously, if the consumer is slower than the producers, a lot of data will be buffered in the queue. The OM may happen because of it. To solve this problem, we need to control the rate of the producers. Each time the memory quota is exceeded, we can suspend all the producers until the buffer data in the queue has been consumed. Even if all data is consumed, producers keep creating data. In this situation, we could control producers rate of creating data by removing one producer to prevent the quota from being exceeded again. From suspending all producers to removing a producer, this process continue until, continues until there is only one producer left. For now, we have discussed the causes of SQL Engine OM and categorized those situations into two kinds. We also talk about situations to the solutions to the situations respectively. For the in-memory resident objects, we use a limit size cache for the in uh, we use the limit size cache. For the pipeline breakers, we use the spill to disk strategy. And for the pipeline operators, 
we use the adaptive control strategy. Next, we will have Huayu introducing the implementation in TiDB. Okay, thanks Song Gao. I'd like to move on to introduction of how TiDB builds its memory management mechanism based on these solutions. First, a brief introduction to TiDB. TiDB is an open source distributed NewSQL database for hybrid transactional and analytical processing, which speaks MySQL protocol. The TiDB architecture design of separating computing from storage makes it possible to separately scale out or scale in the computing or storage cap capacity online as needed. The scaling process is transparent to application operations and maintenance stuff. The data is stored in multiple replicas. Data replicas obtain the transaction log using the multi route protocol. This can guarantee strong consistency and availability when a minority of replicas go down. Transactions in TiDB are strongly consistent with snapshot isolation level consistency. TiDB is comfortable with the MySQL 5.7 protocol. Common features of MySQL and the MySQL ecosystem to migrate applications to TiDB. We do not need to change a single line of code in many cases or only need to modify a small amount of code. Now, let's deep dive into the implementation in TiDB. In TiDB, we introduce two interfaces called name tracker and OOM action. The name tracker is used to track the memory usage of each element. The OOM action is used to abstract the strategies to be used when the memory usage of a SQL exceeds the memory quota. For example, we define the spare to disk strategy as disk spare action and define the adaptive control strategy as a rate limit action. First, let's take a closer look at the effectiveness of the disk spare action and rate limit action in TiDB. This graph shows the effectiveness of the disk spare action. The data set we use is a TBCH with a scale factor 50. We query all the data in the table puts up and sort the result by a column without index. We can see from the left part of the graph that almost 8 gigabyte is used before we set a memory quota large enough. After the memory quota of a SQL is set to 1 gigabyte, as we can see from the right part of the graph, the disk spare action is triggered. The memory usage of this SQL converges to almost one gigabyte. This graph shows the effectiveness of the rate limit action. The test case we use here is to dump almost 200 gigabyte data from TiDB before we set the memory quota to a limited value. OOM will happen when the TiDB process will be cured by the OOM OS OOM killer. Then we set the memory quota to one gigabyte. The process runs successfully and the memory usage is shown in the graph. As we can see in the early three minutes, the memory usage reaches the threshold. Then the rate limit action is triggered. After that, the memory usage converges to almost 500 megabytes until the dump task finished. Next, we'll see how TiDB organizes the mem trackers and OOM actions 
to build its memory management mechanism. We take the following SQL as example. This SQL queries all the S point B from the joint result of T and S. We assume the generated query plan tree is as shown in the graph. There are two table scan operators and a hash join operator and a sort operator. For each operator in the query plan tree, a mem tracker will be built to track the memory usage of the related operators individually. And a memory tracker tree will be built according to the query plan tree. Moreover, a root mem tracker will be defined as a root node of the mem tracker tree to track the total memory usage of this SQL. So when we are OOM action be used, let's take the detailed executing phase of this SQL as an example to see how the OOM action works. We start from the query plan tree being built. Then the sort operator starts to work and a disappear action is created for it. This OOM action will be put into an OOM action linked list. Then the hash join operator starts to work and a disappear action for hash join will also be created. It will be put into the head of this OOM action linked list. Then table scan one starts to work and a rate limit action is created and the OOM action will be put into the head of the linked list as well. Then table scan two starts to work and a rate limit action is created and put into the linked list two. We assume that the memory quota of the query is exceeded now. Then the root mem tracker will trigger the first unused OOM action in the OOM action linked list. It's the rate limit action of table scan two for now. Thus, the adaptive control of the OOM of the memory usage will be used on table scan two. Memory usage will reduce after the action is triggered. And then the OOM action may be triggered when the memory quota is exceeded again. A ladder with limit action will be triggered. Memory usage will reduce after this action is triggered too. The next time memory usage exceeds, spear, this spear action of hash join will be triggered and will spear the hash table into a disk. And the memory usage is under control now. After all the OOM action is triggered, the query should is key. If the available memory is still not enough, we'll spear the intermediate data of sort into disk. And after all the OOM action is triggered, the query should execute successfully, theoretically. As we described before, TIDB introduces the map tracker and OOM action interface to build its memory management mechanism. There is still something we can do to improve the mechanism. First, we can support priority for different actions. The execution order of the OOM actions now is defined by the execution order of the related operators. We can add a priority for different OOM actions. Thus, we can execute the most effective OOM action as early as possible to decrease the OOM action usage quickly. Secondly, 
we can support a more adaptive memory control strategy. For example, we can enable the pending worker to run again if the memory usage is available after an OOM action is triggered. Thirdly, TIDB only supports a session-level memory, memory control mechanism for now. We can support a server-level memory control mechanism to make it more efficient. All right, we come to the end of our presentation. Thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you all enjoyed our talk. If you are interested in more discussion around SQL Engine problems or TIDB, welcome to join us. You could find a GitHub address, official website, and our Twitter handle on this page. That is almost everything we could we would like to cover today. Now, if there are any questions, would, we would be pleased to answer them.